Happy Valentine's Day weekend. Uh, <clears throat> I saw this week that uh, Pastor Ferguson is preaching over in Mills River this Sabbath, and he has a, a nice title that has to do with Valentine's Day, something about uh, reliving the glorious matrimony or something. I don't remember exactly what it is. <clears throat> Sadly, that's not what we're talking about this morning on Valentine's Day. <laughs> We're continuing our final events series, and today we're toppling the New World Order. And uh, I don't necessarily know a connection between Valentine's Day and the New World Order. I know 18 years ago when I married my Valentine, there was a New World Order in the right household. (laughs) I will say that. I better probably leave it right there. But I love Elizabeth very much, and her support means the world to me. And so hug your sweeties this weekend. Do something special for one another. Celebrate your love. Um, Those are all wonderful and good things. So we've been looking in this uh, final events seminar that we've been going through, or, or sermon series, if you will. And we looked at the end time prophetic catalyst, and we talked about all these various things that are building up towards this National Sunday Law, and it's like dominoes, and how those final events, I believe, will be very rapid ones. Um, You can go back and catch that one on our live stream. If you have not heard that, we talked about the abomination of desolation and tried to break down uh, that there's an initial application, the siege of Jerusalem. Then there's a union of church and state from 538 to 1798, but then there's also an end-time application, uh, the National Sunday Law. And so if you didn't catch that one, you can go back and grab it. Last time, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the four stages of the Sunday Law. And so we tried to break that down a little bit, how in phase one, Sunday is enforced as a day of rest, and that's when we are called to do missionary labor. How in phase two, you can honor Sabbath, but you must honor Sunday. It's mandated, and it's at that point that people start receiving the mark of the beast uh, as they go along with forced worship, if you will. Uh, Phase three escalates where you can't worship on Sabbath, only on Sunday, and there's fines, imprisonment imposed, you cannot buy or sell, and then in phase four, it finally ratchets up to the death decree. And so again, if that's one that you're interested in that you missed, you can go back and grab that one. And today, uh, we're trying to tackle this topic of the new world order, and we'll delve into that here just momentarily. We have a few other topics that we still want to cover. Uh, But that's where we are in this sermon series. And so for this final events, part four, I've entitled it, Is the New World Order Multiple Choice? Is the New World Order Multiple Choice? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we delve into this topic, uh, there are aspects of this that are very simple and some other aspects that are a little more complicated. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us and guide us in our study this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So the question we want to ask is, what is the new world order? Have you heard those terms thrown around? Have you seen them in headlines? Um, I've seen a few. This one says, new world order emerging post-COVID. India can be a leader, according to India News. This is another one from the Connecticut Mirror. Data is the currency, uh, sir, sorry, data is the currency of a new world order. Uh, and that's trying to make the, the case for data and who knows what and so on. Here's another one from the New Yorker. It says, Biden faces more aggressive rivals and frain world order. So there we have it again, and the article speaks a lot about the threat of China and how it's on track to overtake the economy in just seven years along with flexing greater military muscle and expertise in technology, and so that's the case that that article is making. So there's this idea that perhaps by the year 2030, the United States might succumb to China, and this would be the new world order. And really that's a fancy way of saying new pecking order. For those of you that maybe you're on the farm or what have you, you have several animals, maybe you have multiple dogs. There is a dog, if you've put it all in one dish, that will eat first, right? 
We call it a pecking order, and then second, and then third, and sometimes there's some tussles, some, you know, back and forth until everybody figures out, especially if there's a new dog in the house, they have to figure out very quickly where they fit and where they line up. Well, the New World Order is this idea that at the top of the food chain, if you will, is the United States of America, but there's going to be a new world order, a new pecking order, a new chain of command, if you will, on the global scene. And so you have other articles talking about the most powerful countries in the world. And all of this is oftentimes very much surrounded with conspiracy theories as people wade into the weeds and make arguments and cases for it's going to be this because, or it's going to be this over there because, and these people are talking behind closed doors, and those people are talking behind closed doors, and so this is going to be the new order, no, this is going to be the new world order, and it just kind of turns into white noise. Um, no. Here's another one. COVID and the new world order. Um, and it has different ideas and things. I'm trying to remember what else I was going to say about that one. I don't know. How COVID is, is, is bringing this on. This maybe says a little bit more. COVID and the new world order building a new human-centered economy. Have you heard anything like that? Challenges us to rethink our economic system. Uh, some are posing nobody should own anything, nobody should own any property, and this is coming, and so on. The Great Reset in Time, it says, COVID-19 pandemic has provided a unique opportunity to think about the kind of future we want. Time partner with the World Economic Forum, that's been the news a lot too, to ask leading thinkers to share ideas of how to transform the ways we live and work. I think most people just want to live and work and go back to normal, but anyway... Then you have this one, world leaders pledge a great reset after the pandemic. Uh, In this article, to pull up a, a section of it here, it says, but through a digital platform, the forum's organizers nevertheless set out an agenda that's arguably more ambitious than before. Klaus Schwab of the WEF, or World Economic Forum, founder and executive chairman, invoked the need to help provide a great reset around the world in the wake of the pandemic. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old system, systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century, he said in a podcast ahead of events this week. So this is a little interesting. It's a little unnerving. Where is this going to go? And again, is this new world order multiple choice? Is it just based on whatever evidence we can find and scrounge up, whatever articles we can put together? And do we, in fact, need a great reset? Anybody ever have their phone acting up? An app not working? Your computer freezes? Typically, the first thing they'll tell you to do, reset. You need to reset. You need to start over. Is that what we need? And so what is this new world order? Is it any of these things? None of these things? All of these things? Well, I think we have seen some significant shifts, to be sure, just in my lifetime, just in the past 30 years even, the the time that I can even remember things happening, there's been a significant shift in the world order of things. And you might say, now wait a second, how? But I want to look at some of those things that put us in a better place now for the fulfilling of Bible prophecy than even just 30 years ago. Because the reality is new world order is not found in the Bible. I don't believe it's found in the writings of spirit prophecy. However, the idea of powers and kingdoms and who's in charge and who's in control, we see that throughout scripture, don't we? There in in the book of Daniel, we have uh, all of these various beasts depicted first with the image and then it fleshes out further with repetition and enlargement. So we know about Babylon, we know about Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, then we know about the, the papacy that comes out of Rome, and then we know about the United States in Bible prophecy. We're going to talk more about both of those. And then finally, and I've chosen this picture not because I believe Biden will be the president necessarily. I think any president could be. It's just he's our president now. But it's this idea of the union of the United States with the papacy coming together to form a different way of doing things. 
Um, and so we have these seven major world orders, if you will, throughout Scripture. But what I want to try to do this morning is a couple of things. I want to zoom back. I don't want to go into the weeds of conspiracy theories uh, or what have you, and there may be some validity to some of those. I don't know. But I want to try and go up a little higher to 50,000 feet and look down at a broader view of some of the things that we've seen happen just in the last 30 years and see how those things set up in a greater way the things that we see that are going to still be fulfilled in Bible prophecy. Because truly, I don't believe the New World Order is multiple choice. I believe the Bible tells us very plainly and clearly what we can expect. And so as Seventh-day Adventists, we don't look at the news like everybody else looks at the news. We don't follow this rabbit trail or that rabbit trail, but we prayerfully consider, Lord, how are these things impacting where your word tells us we are going in Bible prophecy? Does that make sense? All right, so let's see what we can do here. First of all, where did this term come from? Um, first, Woodrow Wilson was the first one to use it, I believe. Uh, and it was after World War I. And he says this, I can predict with absolute certainty that within another generation there will be another world war if the nations of the world do not concert the method by which to prevent it. Meaning the world needs to come together. Now, did we have another world war? We did. He was right. But in an effort to prevent that, he came up with 14 considerations for peace uh, proposed by the then President of the United States. And in January 1918, he announced these four points. Um, and eventually, out of that, was created this League of Nations, which really predates the United Nations which was a world body to try and settle future conflicts among nations. Uh, and so in this, he talks about we need a new world order, a new way of doing business on a global scale. And so I guess that's really the first time that this new world order...